you know, one of the things that I've discovered is that on any particular particular week, the Lord will throw something your way that is unexpected. And because it's unexpected, sometimes you don't know how to respond to it. But we live by faith and not by sight. And so I want to at least pause, because I think on a Sabbath like today, our congregation is grieving, right? I have to acknowledge that, right? And grief is a part of life. So some have not heard yet, and then some you'll be hearing it now, but your previous pastor, colleague, and I found out a year ago we are related as well. Pastor Bulgin has passed away. Okay, and he spent about seven years here, right? And so he's not just a pastor that kind of flowed through this building. He would have meant a lot to many of you, whether in the building or online. And you know, last night um, when I got the phone call on the way uh, to church from Sister Joseph, uh, I wasn't able to answer it because I was in the store um, once a month I buy a pen. I have a little thing that I do uh, for myself. And I was inside Staples getting a pen when the call came in and then she sent a text message and then I called her back and then she explained what had transpired. And you know when uh, she said the words, and remember I've done over a hundred and something funerals during this pandemic, but I realized not all death feels the same. It doesn't mean that you don't care for others. It's just not, everything doesn't hit the same kind of way. Um, and you know, it's interesting, a couple of months ago, Pastor Bulgin and I, we had a really good conversation about ministry. And if he was the last surviving member of his family, I would share that with you. Um, because sometimes it's good for people to hear about ministry from the perspective of pastors. Sometimes we have to ease up <laughs> on ministers because we carry it all. Church members carry what they want to because of what matters to them. But we, we carry it all. I'll leave it there. And so, you know, I was supposed to be here last night with the deacons. And, um, you know, as I was kind of setting up here, thinking in terms of, you know, we have a process. We always have worship on communion, rehearsal, and whatever. Not, and I was just like, not tonight. And so you won't see me at the table today because I didn't rehearse. And even though I'm the pastor, if you don't come to rehearsal, you're not supposed to be behind the table. And so I graciously step out of the way because I have elders that are more than capable to do it because pastor was not here for rehearsal because he went to the hospital. I hope you're hearing me, and it's not about Pastor Andre today. Look, you guys have no idea yet. And because it's communion Sabbath, I'm going to do my best to do my best. But I'm really hurting over his loss. I really am. Not because we were super, super duper close, but because he should still be alive. He really should still be alive. But sometimes the, the toils of this life, things show up. Different diseases show up. People may not be able to say what it is, but we know. A church can sometimes not be an easy place. And yet we grieve today. And I want to say this. There is no exercise of great faith by pretending that this doesn't bother you. He was a man of God. I'm sure he was not perfect. I have yet to meet anybody perfect. Some of you might be perfect, but I have yet to meet somebody that's perfect. I feel it for his wife. 
you know, when you walk into the room and somebody is sitting there, and those of you that have lost spouses before, you know that feeling. Like, you know you got to go, but how do you get up and leave the person you love behind? I felt that for her. And then I feel it for his children because they all live in different places. I, I don't know where they all live, but nobody is living in Canada right now, right? So can you imagine getting the news from a distance that your dad is in the past tense? Ah, oh, that's got to be tough. But there's a bunch of grandchildren as well. Look, he didn't even get to retire. You know, I think about that as well. And we have time. It's Sabbath all day today. And I promise you I won't be super long, but I have to get this out of me because I'm grieving as well as you all are. But I think about the fact that when you get to a certain age, you should be able to retire and transition from the toils of all of whatever it looks like and just be able to enjoy your grandchildren if you have them. Because you know that we are better with grandchildren than we are with our own kids. Let the church say amen. Some of you don't want to admit it, so I'll tell the truth for you because it's communion Sabbath and I want to make sure that I get the blessing as well. I think about all of those things. But then I also think about the way that I saw him because he was already deceased when I walked into the room. There was a peace over his body. You can't die that kind of way and look like that without having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then I also had some other mixed emotions as well because that's the hospital that I was sick in. And I thought to myself, how did you get to walk out? And he's going to be rolled out. So I'm asking you all to pray for his family. And not as an addendum to your grace, you know, sometimes we're praying over the food and then we remember, oh, I need to pray for so-and-so. No, not that one. Set aside. I'm also thinking about his church. And even with his illness and his battle with diabetes, his church was one of the fastest growing churches in Ontario. That man was working despite what was happening in his body. I think about his congregation. He was a blessing to them. And you know, the sad part about ministry is most of us don't appreciate what we have until it's gone. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to kiss your teeth on live YouTube, but I'm kissing my teeth this morning. I know that he is going to be a part of that number. But I just wish he was still alive today. And I don't really need anybody to give me any of the passages. I'm a pastor. I know all of the passages of comfort. I know all of them from Genesis to Revelation. And I'm not saying I don't need the word right now. What I'm saying is sometimes I wrestle with God because I'm like, how do you, how do you come to those conclusions? Who gets to live and who gets to die? And I know some of you are already saying, but pastor, you see, this is why Wednesday night is crucial because we're talking about that in the book of Job. I know. But I'm human, right? And even though some of you may not wrestle with this, sometimes I wrestle within myself as I talk to God and I say, why him at his age and some people get to be the oldest people that ever lived on the planet?
but I thank God he knows what he's doing. I'm resolved in that. And you all know I'm not political, so I'm not trying to mince or massage words. This is what I'm feeling today. So as his children travel to come in to Toronto to um, be here as a family, let's pray that they arrive safely. Let's pray that only those who have words of comfort, may their, those phone calls come in. And to the theologians, may their calls be dropped even before they are sent. Because sometimes in these times, types of moments, you just need to hear from people who love you genuinely. It's another season of loss that's coming. I promise you, it's, it's on its way. I can see it. While some of us are watching CNN or being CNN, there's another wave that's coming again. And you've got to be ready. We have to be ready. So let's not be caught up in drinking and marrying and eating and, you know, all of the stuff that the Bible has to say. Focus. The man looked like a baby boy on that bed. Peace over him which means that's the way his soul died, at peace with the Lord. Peace is better than money. Peace is better than a nice house, nice car. Peace is better than even nice manicure with white tips. Let the church say amen. (laughs) I see you back there, LaDonna, checking your hand. I was talking about toe, toe, not hands. (laughs) But in the the midst of this, I still choose to smile. Because it was well with his soul, so it has to be well with my soul. 